Hello. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of your technologically inept foods teacher here to teach you today about how to use uh, Mrs. K's pancake recipe in four different ways. Okay. Here's my helper, Olivia, my daughter, and her, uh, her daughter, Flower. So today we're going to be doing uh, my pancake recipe. I'm going to show you what it is. Um, it's, I'm going to post a link for you guys on my Google Classroom so that you have access to it. Pancakes are super cheap. They're easy to make um, and you should have most of the ingredients in your kitchen uh, and of course you can add different things into them. So uh, I make pancakes all the time almost every single weekend for my kids and sometimes I get bored. I personally don't eat pancakes myself but I make them all the time and sometimes I like to jazz them up. So uh, let me show you what I've got here. So Mrs. K's goals for Pancakes 101. We're gonna make a blueberry pancake. I'm gonna show you how to make an apple cinnamon pancake for um, if you wanna just jazz things up or for me, I wanna sneak a fruit uh, into my kids' food. How you can use your pancake um, mixture in your waffle machine and how you can make designs on a griddle with your pancake. So I have a griddle going. You guys might have an electric griddle at home. You could use a frying pan with a little bit of oil in it. And this is the recipe that I'm using. So I'm using 375 mils flour, 15 mils baking powder, one mil salt, 30 mils sugar. And then you sift all of those things together and your wet ingredients are simply 375 milk, one egg, five mils of vanilla and 30 mils of melted butter. And then you whisk it together. And remember that your pancake batter should actually look pretty chunky, okay? You'd never want your pancake batter to be super smooth. That'll be overmixed, overworked. Um, so first of all, uh, let's start with a blueberry pancake. So I'm gonna pass this over here to my husband and he's gonna video me over here. Uh, well, I, come and flip it. flip it, yeah, he's gonna flip it, all right. So I have my trusty Pam. Pam! So if you don't have Pam at home, you could use some melted butter. You could brush it on with a pastry brush. You could also use a little bit of canola oil brushed on with a pastry brush. Mm. Now, if you don't have a ladle, that's fine. Actually, in my classroom, you guys know we've made pancakes before. I like to use a dry measuring cup to scoop out pancakes. Now, if you want to scoop your pancakes onto your griddle, you always you can always just spread them out a little bit. This pancake batter is can a little bit thick. I can. My kids okay. like mini ones. That's fine. Um, so with the pancake batter, I like to spread it out on the griddle like this. Now this is a very, this is my basic batter. You can use it as it is. Um, so those, those two can be just some basic ones. Now I'm going to make these two blueberry. Now typically with blueberry pancakes or chocolate chip or whatever you want, I never put it in the blueberries or the chocolate chips directly in the batter. Um, because basically those things are very heavy, they sink to the bottom. So if you're gonna do something like that, you wanna usually, what I do is I take my blueberries and I push them in for, so that they're even, you know? I'm pushing each blueberry. I do it with strawberries, my daughter requests it. Olivia? Yeah, okay. Okay, I do it for my daughter. I do it with raspberries, strawberries, whatever berries she wants. She really likes berries, but my son, he hates all the berries. So, you know, I make him the basic ones. now. Um, how do you sneak some other fruits and vegetables? You can sneak vegetables in here for sure. You can make like a carrot cake style pancake where you grate a few carrots and then you throw in a little bit of cloves, a little bit of allspice, um, some cinnamon as well, or uh, pumpkin, even a small amount of pumpkin. Um, so those ones are gonna bake, but uh, now what are we looking for in terms of doneness? Well, for a pancake, we're always looking to see that there's an even dispersal of bubbles at the top surface, which should indicate that the pancake is at least 50 to 70% cooked all the way through. And as always, GBD, golden brown and delicious. So we don't wanna play with our pancakes a lot. Um, so we wanna like take a look at the bottom and they're starting to get golden brown, so that's great. But while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna go over here. So I have another batter that's ready to go and waiting for me. Um, the things that I have measured out here, so I've got my sifted flour, my salt, my sugar, and my, my baking powder um, in this bowl. And I'm going to measure out 12 ounces. And I sometimes find that you're going to need a little bit more milk because it's quite a bit of the leavening agent. So your leavening agent is your rising agent, which is baking powder in this case. Um, and to sneak some fruits and vegetables, or fruit in this particular case, 
into your batter, what I do is I have one grated apple here um, with some cinnamon. So I'm going to just get some cinnamon. I really like the Kirkland cinnamon. I really enjoy it. It's got a nice strong taste. Throw some cinnamon in there and then now we're going to have a cinnamon apple pancake. So I'm going to toss my apples into my dry ingredients. Okay, like this. Now because we have quite a bit of apple in there, so that's one peeled and grated apple. So I grated it on the fat side of my cheese grater. Now at this point I've got my 12 ounces of milk. So it's a one to one ratio. A pour, pour batter is always one part liquid to one part flour. So that applies to things like waffles, pancakes. I've got my liquids in here and Mom, I always... It's gonna burn. Yeah, I'm gonna get back to that in just one second, lovey. Okay, so then for my vanilla, I mean in my own house, I just measure it using the cap. That's about five mils. I use some nice Mexican vanilla. Um, and I find vanilla really makes a difference. I mean, you could use any extract you want, but if you're using extracts, probably don't use five mils. Probably use one or two because other extracts are a lot more strong than a lot of the vanilla that we use. So now, at this point, I'm going to pour in all of my liquids. Okay. And I'm going to just toss it together. We don't want to have a, ha a hand mixer or anything like that. You want, you want your pancake batter to be moist. And chunky and brought together now this one looks a little bit honestly it looks a little bit liquidy in my opinion so your pancake batter this batter I like it to be a little bit on the thicker side so I have my flour here um, I'm gonna add a little bit but often it will get thicker because of the leavening agent as it sits so let's come back over here to these ones because these guys are ready to be flipped so if I take a look at them they're golden brown and delicious I'm flipping them over you want to make sure that you spray your griddle each time um, with some Pam or you use your oil each time and um, then you remove them onto a plate. You can keep them on that plate in an oven at an oven around 170 to 190 Fahrenheit where it just keeps everything nice and warm. Another thing that you could do, so the fourth thing, so I'm going to get my batter together here and I'm going to get it on the griddle. I'm going to add just a tiny amount more flour. So when you see that something is a little bit too liquidy, then we need to add more structure, which means uh, flour uh, is always going to be extra structure because of the gluten. So gluten um, is the protein that exists in flour, a complex of two proteins, glutenine and gliadin. And um, that's what allows batter, uh, batters and doughs to become very elastic, okay? So I'm going to just add a little bit more. So it looks to me like I added about 50 milliliters more flour. Always add a little bit less because you can always add more, but if you make it too dry, it's not so fun to do the reverse. Okay, so I've got my batter here ready to go for my next my next bit. And Olivia, do you know where my Ziploc bag went? Okay, so what I have here is a Ziploc bag full of batter, okay? So my kids, when they were young, they always used to say, Mom, can you make me Thomas the Train pancake? And I'm like, you know... I'm a mother, not a miracle worker. So if you're, you want to have a good time, you can use, you know, an old ketchup and mustard bottle, or you can use a Ziploc bag and make a little design, right? On your griddle. Using just the corner of a, well, that's supposed to be a star. It doesn't look very much like a star, but. You can do all kinds of things, right? So I'll fill this one in. It's a nice heart-shaped pancake. So if you've got kids and you want to entertain them because you guys are bored at home because you're on self-isolation or quarantine, um, you could use a Ziploc bag and make different shapes. So these guys are definitely going to be done. So check that out. Golden Brown GBD on the bottom. Check on GBD on the bottom. Golden Brown and Delicious. Some regular ones. Same thing. Okay. All right, so the next bit of pancakes that I'm going to make here are the apple cinnamon pancakes. So I'm going to use my measuring cup here. I'm going to give my griddle another spray. So always spray in between, okay? And I'm going to use this apple cinnamon mixture on my griddle. And then I'm going to take the same apple cinnamon mixture. I'm going to add a little more flour because you want it to be a little bit on the thicker side if we're going to put that same batter um, into a waffle iron. So let's see if I, I have some of my extra. Yeah, I'm going to 
Yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more flour. Yes. Um, do you want blueberries inside the heart? I can put them in for you after, okay? Or on top. So right now I'm going to use the same batter, the same pancake batter. Now hold back a little bit of the milk if you're planning to put this into a waffle iron. You want it to be a little bit thicker if you're using a waffle iron. So I've got my waffle iron preheated. A few things about a waffle iron. Uh, you definitely want your iron to be heated, preheated well. And the key is if you love yourself and you don't want to clean up for uh, 18 hours, you want to make sure that you spray both sides of the waffle iron at every time or every other time uh, that you're going to put something, uh, the batter into it. A few tips about using a waffle iron. When you put batter into a waffle iron, you never fill each tray all the way, okay? You just put a little dot because as I put this down, this batter is going to squish into the square area and, and it's going to fit perfectly. But if I fill it fully, it's going to squish out the sides and you're going to have a heck of a mess on your hands. So make sure that you only put, you know, a circular amount in the middle. It doesn't have to fill all the way, but it will when I put the lid down. Kids tend to want to always be playing with the lid of the waffle iron. Um, most of waffle irons have an indicator light. So when it goes green, then we're going to check it. And same, same idea, we're looking for golden brown and delicious. So we've got the four ways. So we've got the regular pancake mix. I gave you guys the recipe. I'll include a link. Um, and we can put blueberries in the recipe if you want. And blueberries, chocolate chips, whatever fruit you like to make things a little bit more fun. Okay. Um, you can pipe it from a Ziploc bag and make some shapes for kids or you can use an old cleaned out mustard or ketchup bottle. That'll work really well too. Um, or you can jazz it up with uh, different fruits and spices of choice. Okay, so I did apples and cinnamon today. So basic pancake batter used in a ton of different ways. Um, so until next time, from your Tech Annette foods teacher, farewell.